Labour Party candidate in the 2023 presidential election, Peter Obi, is advocating a return to the parliamentary system of government and a single term of five years for the president over the next 30 years. Reacting to the Supreme Court judgment that affirmed Bola Tinubu winner of the February 25th presidential election, Obi accused the Supreme Court of breaching Nigeria's constitution and eroding citizens' trust in the judiciary. Arise correspondent Chinasa Samuel reports. More than a week after Nigeria's highest court, the Supreme Court, upheld the earlier ruling of the Presidential Elections Petition Tribunal, affirming Bola Tinubu as the winner of the 2023 presidential election. Labour Party's Peter Obi, alongside his running mate, Dati Baba Ahmed, and other party stalwarts are formally addressing the media on the matter. Please another round of applause for his excellent Thank you. Displeased by the ruling, Obi accuses the Apex Court of ignoring evidence and abandoning its responsibility as a court of law and policy. He says the court willfully condoned breaches to the Nigerian constitution. Even the electoral body INEC is not spared, as Obi says INEC displayed incompetence in the conduct of the election. This judgment amounts to a breach of confidence of Nigerians have in our judiciary. INEC displayed incompetence in the conduct of its statutory duties. The judiciary has largely acted in defiance of the constitutional tenants, presidents, and established ground rules. Just like his counterpart in the opposition People's Democratic Party, Obi is now advocating for restructuring of Nigeria's governance and political system. He says a reform of the constitution for a five-year turner on a rotational basis will allow more interaction between citizens and their leaders. If we cannot go back to the issue of parliamentary democracy, we must have a quasi system that will allow our leaders elected whether prime minister or president, to be able to be part of the legislature, especially to answer questions. Despite the verdict, Obi assures his supporters that the quest for a new Nigeria has not ended. He says the Labour Party and the obedient movement will now be effective in a position, offering the checks and balances required for functional democracy. Going forward, we in Labour Party and the Obedient Movement are now effectively in opposition. Our mission has been more about anchoring a new Nigeria and it remains unchanged. On the controversial presidential yacht and the SUVs for lawmakers, the LP flag bearer says his administration would have done different. He accuses the Tunubu administration of being uncaring and insensitive to the plight of Nigerians. If we were in office, nobody would have contemplated such. And that's where we want to go from. With the Supreme Court judgment putting an end to the legal battle on the outcome of the 2023 presidential election, Nigerians look forward to the next general elections. The spotlight will now be on how the National Assembly reacts to the constitutional changes being recommended. Chinaza Samuel. Arise News. Meanwhile, in a reaction, the special advisor to the President on Information and Strategy, Baron Onoga, says Obi, who was a beneficiary of the Supreme Court judgment in the past, contradicted himself by criticizing the same court because his judgment did not go his way. He accused Obi of making false allegations of rigging and other electoral malpractice, which he could not provide evidence for to back up at both court of first instance at the Apex Court. Nanuga welcomes uh, Obi and his party to play the role of opposition and start preparing for another shot at the presidency in 2027. In another reaction, National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress, Felix Morka, accused Peter Obi of having an arrogant sense of entitlement. He said Obi is confused by the mass hysteria of his uh, vociferous netizens and fringe supporters. Dr. Bati? Okay, Happy let me. Happy birthday once again. Yes, thank you. Let me start with the uh, reactions. There have been uh, reactions from the uh, presidency and also the party. Felix Mocha has accused Mr. Peter Obi of living in what he calls alternative reality, what he calls a space of uh, political uh, delusion. And uh, Mr. Bayononoga, 
the special advisor to the president on information, has uh, said that uh, Mr. Peter B is involved in a copycat reaction. And he used some other adjectives that I think maybe should not be repeated in uh, decent company. Okay, I think the reaction is a bit overboard. Both uh, Mr. Nonoga and uh, Mr. Felix Mokan, knowing that, look, there is uh, an end to litigation. And that after the Supreme Court, the apex court of the land, <laughs> you can only appeal to God. Uh, I thought their reaction was not necessary. You cannot, uh, how do they say it in uh, traditional parlance? You can't beat a child and expect him not to cry. If uh, Mr. Obi, uh, you know, as is the case, has lost at the APS court, he has every right uh, to make a comment. What is important is to listen to what he's saying. And, um, you know, I think he's addressing Nigerians generally, not necessarily uh, President Tinumbu, whom he did not call out. Uh, so I think that in this particular case, uh, silence would have been better in terms of response. Before now, we had uh, the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who responded. Okay, nobody made an issue out of that. He responded that passed. Mr. Peter will be now, two weeks after the fact, has now made his own uh, press statement to put a closure to it, or to use his phrase, to announce a new beginning uh, for his own political career. I don't think he has committed any offense. That's number one. The second point, what are the issues raised by Mr. Peter Obi? Mr. Peter Obi flagellated the Supreme Court. He was uh, saying that the Supreme Court uh, contradicted itself, uh, derailed the course of uh, justice, uh, voted for technicalities instead of substantive law, and that uh, all of these will breach the confidence of uh, Nigerians in the judiciary. And that, uh, you know, the Supreme Court uh, disregarded public opinion. I don't want to comment further on that. I've made a point repeatedly on this uh, program. There's a book by Professor Friedman, which I've quoted in an essay in uh, uh, this day newspaper, back page, I think uh, last week, you know, talking about public opinion and Supreme Court and all of that. But people just must know that the law is the law, okay? I don't want to go further there. But Mr. Peter Obi and the obedient movement, whom he specifically acknowledged, and this is a response to the Supreme Court, you know, uh, I've always said, oh, public opinion should determine what happens in the courts. If public opinion determines what happens in the courts, then of course, why do we have uh, justices or judges or magistrates? Now, okay, and Mr. Peter Obi, like, uh, Waziri Adamawa Atiku Abubakar also referred to the valedictory uh, speech given by the outgoing, now outgone Justice uh, Mohamed Datijo, uh, who criticized his own colleagues and drew attention to omissions within the judiciary. All that is fine. I don't see a problem with it. You know, what is more important is that Mr. Peter B has also said that he and the members of the uh, Labour Party and the obedient movement are going to go on to a new beginning, which will be to play their role as the opposition. That is our expectation. That is what we want. More importantly, he made the recommendation that you know, presidents of Nigeria should have a single five-year term. Now, uh, vi uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar had recommended six-year term. The principle behind it being Look, let this thing go round. After six years, let it go to another region. We have six geopolitical zones. But uh, Mr. Peter will be responding to that particular point. said, look, let it be five years. So that within a cycle of uh, 30 years, you will have had a president of Nigeria from different parts of the country to generate a sense of inclusion, togetherness, unity, in line with perhaps the federal character principle under Section 14, Sub 2 of the uh, 1999 Constitution. Now, my comment on this is that it is interesting that this subject is coming up. During my tour of duty as Special Advisor uh, and Presidential Spokesperson, this issue came up. 
President Jonathan was the first to say, look, let's do a six-year term for this presidency. But the opposition at the time, led instructively by the uh, APC and perhaps also to a large degree by uh, now President Tinubu, said, oh, uh, Jonathan was trying to get a second term uh, through the back door and wanted to elongate his stay in office, even when everybody knew that a law cannot have retrospective effect. And now we're back to that conversation. And I hope that some of the issues that have been thrown up by both Waziri Adamawa and Mr. Peter Obi will be issues that people will listen to, to see how all of that can be taken on board to reform you know, the electoral process, to amend the constitution so that we can move forward. Mr. Peter Obi declaring that he would uh, now take on the role of the opposition is welcome to do precisely that. And he talked about the quasi, you know, parliamentary presidential uh, system. Well, that's another issue that he brought up. I would have expected uh, both Mr. Nonuga and uh, Felix Moka to respond to some of those issues that he and Atiku threw up and use that as a basis for public debate rather than all this name calling, uh, calling him copycat, calling him. No, you can't beat a child and expect him not to cry. Okay, so a couple of things. Mr. Peter Obi uh, took our time to respond to all that had happened, the Supreme Court ruling, and he has every right to. <clears throat> and he talked about the need for public opinion. And I must have to reiterate, public opinion does matter in society because it's an agglomeration of public opinion that forms what makes society law and its own morality. If public opinion doesn't matter, all right? When there was a bill push for homosexuality, in this country. Public opinion refused it because that's not our society. Even the electoral law we have today is an offshoot of public opinion. Public opinion is so important that the grand norm our constitution says we the people. Why didn't it say we the drafters? So that's the power of public opinion. And Peter will be enunciated that yesterday. Talked about the fact that he'll be in opposition. What opposition should do is create solutions. So what I expect from the Labour Party now is Every sector of the national economy, anything that happens, give a robust response. Take, for instance, the Naira situation. What would the Labour Party have done? So I want to see more articles as regards this. And that's what brings me to the issue of where I'm going to call Mr. Peter Obi out this morning. And I'm going to disagree with him. Mr. Peter Obi, you are disagreeing with the president as regards the yacht, which I condemn, the five billion. But how about your own Labour Party lawmakers? Why can't they reject that 160 million for the cars? Because if Labour Party was touted as something new and different, you need to be able to stay with the people. And the people, public opinion, is against that 160 million. So if you're going to tell your Labour Party lawmakers or your Labour Party senators to reject it, it's the best you do it now. Also, it's time for us now to go back to the National Assembly and these are some of the things lawmakers must push. Let's fine tune the electoral law properly. We need to be able to know, are those guidelines laws? Can we codify them? Can we make all of those amends to the things that blighted the last elections once and for all? Can those reforms, as been stated in the waste panel, start to take effect? Can we actually push to a certain extent now that the president will not be the one to nominate the next INEC chief. Before you know it, anytime soon, the president might choose to nominate a new INEC person. But the president should not be nominating the INEC chief because of bias. That's what the Waste Report said over 15 years ago. And that's why when Mr. Jega was saying it, I said, Professor Jega was saying it, I said, it's been said before, it's in the Waste Report. And he alluded to that fact. Can we also rejig INEC? Can we make INEC more accountable? Can we fix our electoral system within the next four years? Those are the kind of things opposition should do and make a lot of noise about. The APC reacting, yes, they'll react. They take a shot at uh, Peter Obi and all of that. But that does not remove from all the matters we've been, that have been put on ground by Peter Obi, which he made very pertinent points for. And I must repeat, talking about the presidential rotation, in the first place, why should the presidency even be this powerful? We had regionalism that worked for us back in the days. We had the Midwest region, Southern region, I mean the, the Western region, and all of that. And these people grew, and these regions, beg your pardon, grew at their own pace at that time. 
And that's what we've been talking about when we are talking about restructuring. This same APC, led by El, El Rufai, had a committee set up for restructuring. What's the result of that committee? What's the result of the CONFAB report? So today it's not been implemented. So we need to now talk about how Nigeria will run over the next four years. Because if we don't get those things right, we'll just rig my road to the next electoral process. And when we rig my road to the next electoral process, we continue the mistakes we've constantly made. And those are the things I believe opposition should do. And people like Peter Obi and uh, Waziri Atiku uh, Abubaka should start pushing. And that's why we have robust opposition. Like I argued before, I am not saying, and a lot of people misconstrued me because people know how to misconstrue what people say. I am not saying that opposition parties should be paid to be in opposition. But I'm saying that for the importance of what the role opposition play in every society Climbs like the UK even pay their opposition leaders. That was just to enunciate the importance of the opposition. So ideas. This is where we want flourishing ideas. This one want good logic. This one want article upon article. Tackling the things government done, are, are done wrong. And also praising them when they do well. And that's objectivity of opposition. Because in the end, we want this country to work. And that's all we crave for.